Kosoi Watashi wa Nanun Ego Sum. I am Chris, and this is Chris in English. And I want to know. I want to know something. I want to know. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? <laughs> that, of course, that's a famous line from um, uh, the Dirty Harry movies. Clint Eastwood, do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? Good morning, my mayor. Good to see you today. Good morning, dad, and good to see you. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? It's Friday the 13th. I feel lucky. <laughs> Go Arizona! What's going on in Arizona? Are the are the Cardinals going to win something? Is that what's happening? <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, happy Friday! Happy Friday the thirteenth. As you both know, I was born on a Friday the thirteenth. So while everyone around the world is running around all scared, I'm fine. Friday the thirteenth is a great day, luckiest day ever, if you ask me. So yes, I feel lucky, punk. Yes, I do. <laughs> what else is going on today? Oh, today is also Carberry Day. Carberry Day. I just found out about this. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, there's a guy. A guy. His name is... Oh! Oh, Arizona declared for Biden. Yeah, I thought... I thought that was a done deal. At least, that's what Fox said on, on the first day. <laughs> hey, I have no objections to a Friday the 13th. I will take them all the time. Professor Josiah Stinkney Carberry is a fictitious professor. He's not real. He doesn't really exist. Hello, Mr. Nemo. Good to see you, sir. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm talking quickly about a guy named Professor Josiah Stinky Carberry, who's actually not real. He's fictitious. He's a fictitious professor at the real Brown University in Rhode Island. Every Friday the 13th, which is considered to be Carberry Day, small brown jugs appear all around the campus. And the idea is that everybody takes their pocket change, their pennies, their quarters, their nickels, their dimes, and puts their money in the jug. And all the money is collected, and it goes to the school's library fund. In memory of my future late wife, Laura, says the fictitious Professor Carberry. So happy Carberry Day to everyone out there, but especially to the people at Brown University, putting money in jugs. We've got some birthdays. Robert Louis Stevenson was born on this date in 1850. Robert Louis Stevenson is an English writer. You know him. He wrote great books like Treasure Island and The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Happy birthday, Robert Louis Stevenson. Happy birthday to, to one of my favorite people, Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall is an American TV and film producer. He created such hit TV shows as Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mint, so many others. Gary Marshall was a huge name and an important name in American television. Uh, he also produced movies like Pretty Woman. Happy birthday, Gary Marshall, 1934. John Delancey, also an American actor. He, uh, he was in a famous TV show called Days of Our Lives which is a, a, a soap opera. But he did something else. He was born in 1948, this day 1948. What else did he do? Oh, yes, he played a character called Q on Star Trek The Next Generation. Maybe you know him from that. I don't know. Happy birthday, Mr. Delancey. Happy birthday, Jimmy Kimmel, born on this day in 1967. Jimmy Kimmel, of course, is a TV host. You'll see him every weekday night, 1130, Channel 10, Jimmy Kimmel Live. No, I'm not paid to tell you that. But you might, uh, you might like it anyway. Happy birthday, Whoopi Goldberg, born on this day in 1955. Whoopi Goldberg, of course, is an American actress. She's a comedian. She's a singer. She was in movies like little movies, little small movies. Color Purple, Sister Act, Ghost, Lion King. Yeah, 
nobody knows that movie. But she's really known. She's most famous for great movies like, like, Jumping Jack Flash. And who can forget Tammy and the T-Rex. Happy birthday, Miss Goldberg. But a very special but early birthday to my aunt, Miriam Nason, who will be celebrating her 80th birthday this Sunday. Thank you, Aunt Mimi, for being a wonderful aunt and a fantastic person. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to everyone out there. If you have a birthday coming up, let me know so that I can celebrate you as well. But that's not why you're here. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not why you're here at all. You're not here for birthdays. You're, you're certainly not here for Cabera Day, Caberi Day. You're here for the word of the day. Yes, my friends, I am going to teach you an English word that you can use in your English-speaking life. And I hope that this word is the name of something. That's all, I, that's all I can say for this one. Good morning, Mr. William. Good to see you, sir. Our word of the day today is a verb. Our word of the day today is denominate. Denominate. It seems like an easy word, right? Denominate. To give something a name or to give something a title. Denominate. A verb. Assign a name or title. Here's the thing. We don't really use this very often. We would usually say name. I would usually just say name. Here's a sentence for you. Astrology is a fun super... We shouldn't denominate it as a science. Yeah. yeah, astrology can be a fun little game, but don't call it a science. It's not science. Mr. William, good to see you, sir. How are you today? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you very much. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, today, our word of the day is denominate. Okay. Have you ever used denominate? Um, not that I'm aware of. I've used the, the noun denominator. Uh, denominator, yeah. To talk yeah, I, about I, I am more familiar with that, with the word as a mathematical term. Yeah. But they're telling me here to assign a name or title. For example, the candidate with the most electoral votes should be denominated President of the United States. Should be. I think. <laughs> hey, Joker, good to see you. Joker's here. Anybody else out there have a sentence using our word of the day, the verb denominate? If you do, go ahead, write it in the comment section. I'll read it to the world, and then you will become internet famous. Mm. It's a good cup of coffee today, Mr. William. Yeah, mine's mine's quite nice. Oh, good. The, the, oh, a San Diego cup. Oh, a state cup even. San Diego State. You, my normal Friday cup, and uh, you nice. got you got your stormtrooper cup. So there we go. Hey, hello, Harami. Hello, Corinne. Hello, Spenya. Oh, my goodness. it's like an English party. It's like a party in English. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? Um, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition, this is William's Wide World of Sports. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. Once again, the sports world took a backseat um, to everything else going on in this country. Um, once again, we are still counting votes. Um, we do have a president elect, but uh, many, many people, um, maybe half the people, um, are refusing to um, acknowledge or denominate him. <laughs> 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 as so um so it that's that's still going on a lot of pettiness um mm -hmm. i one thing i i have not heard from the president of the united states in like a week um he's hiding and so that's always interesting to see wondering when he's going to come out of of 
his bedroom. We had a really good vocabulary word yesterday. Uh, AWOL. AWOL, yes. AWOL. The president is AWOL. He's gone. He's absent. He's, he's yeah. He's, he's somewhere tweeting, I'm sure. But even the tweets I'm, have gone down as far as I, I can tell. Um, but Hey, buddy. Good to see you. There he is. Yeah. So a, a lot of stuff going on in this country. Um, as everyone knows, um, in this country, as in many countries around the globe, COVID is rising dramatically. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're setting new records every single day in cases. Um, you know, in some places, hospital beds are at a premium. Um, and, uh, you know, I just hope everyone is safe out there and everyone can stay healthy and, and everything will be fine. Um, but the sports world is continuing on, uh, you know, specifically with uh, college football is what we call um, a university football. We don't usually use the term university as much here as, as some of my students do. Uh, we say college, even though college is a university. I apologize. It's what we call college sports. Um, <laughs> speaking of, you know, just being deflated and defeated um, last Saturday, um, my San Diego State Aztecs lost to the San Jose State Spartans, um, which I don't think we've ever done. Um, <laughs> no. They, like I said last week, they're just, they've been absolute bottom feeders and horrible, horrible program. But they are, I got to say, they're undefeated. They are 3-0. and um, But we were supposed to win by over 10 points, and we lost. Um, so now we're 2-1. and one. Uh, we face another two and one team tomorrow, uh, the University of Hawaii, uh, mm. which has been a good team recently. Uh, they spend are they many... flying? Hmm? Are, the, are the teams flying? Are they traveling? Hawaii's coming here. Wow, okay. And I, I, I don't think they're swimming. They could. Oh, good. They could, but they it's might be cold. It's tired. cold. That it's Pacific cold. Ocean is cold. But if you, come on, you put on a wetsuit, you'll be fine. I suppose. And if you it's have not hard. Back... You just You're get in the water, shot. get in the water, and, and you know head east, go east. Okay. Now. okay, or they could boat. They boat. I mean, uh, you know, like a canoe, like Moana or something like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like that. Maybe they could drive. I see a lot of cars with Hawaii license plates around here, so I don't know. I if they can drive. I've always wondered how those cars got here. Maybe uh, they just bring the plates and they they trade. I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie The Incredibles? Oh, yes. The Incredibles 2. Uh, once, yes. Okay, and there's a point where they get the Incredimobile and uh, it's just the kids in the car and they want to chase them. Reminding boat. us they have surfboards in oh, Hawaii. Yes, Nemo. <laughs> surf all the way. Uh, but the car turns into like a boat, so maybe they have one of those Incredibles. Okay. I don't know. Or they, they could fly. Stella! Hey, Stella. So, Hi, Stella. Yeah. So that's, that's that. Um, in NFL news, we had a question yesterday. And yes, there will be games on Thanksgiving. Um, as long as, you know, everyone you know, stays healthy. Um, games have been postponed this year because of COVID. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. But yeah, Detroit will play in the early game. As always, uh, the Cowboys will play in the afternoon game, as always. And there will be an evening game, which has, you know, become normal, I guess, in the last 10, 15 years. I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, the evening game doesn't have set teams. The, the Detroit game and the Dallas game, those are played yeah. every Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and there's, there's, um, there's a history behind that, which I'll, I'd like to talk about next week. Oh, I'll be looking forward to it. You know, to talk about why, you know, Detroit and Dallas are, have played, like, every, I would say every day, every Thanksgiving day of my life, at least as far as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I'll find that out. Um, right. Also, in, in um, other petty news, um, <laughs> they're still handing out baseball awards, and they're going to the wrong people. I just... These I don't know if these the Baseball Writers Association of America actually watched the season <laughs> because they sure didn't stay up late enough to watch the San Diego Padres play. They didn't look at any statistics from the San Diego oh. Padres. Uh, the Rookie of the Year went to some guy I had never heard of, um, so maybe that's my fault, not being a big fan of the Milwaukee Brewers and their middle relieving core. Um, <laughs> and they passed up some guy who pitches once a week 
in non-important situations for a guy who played every single day, played starting second base, was one of the leading hitters on the Padres. Jake Cronenworth finished second. So be it. Ah. Um, on the manager of the year, that was close because um, they gave it to Don Mattingly, who led the Miami Marlins to a playoff berth, but he also let them get COVID. Uh, he did not. They missed, <laughs> they missed like 14 games. He had no control over those players at first. So, yeah, Vida Loca, that's right. Okay. See, I'll put it up there. Vida Loca. That's right. Hey, that's Maria. Good to see you. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, that's not part of the award if you let your team get COVID or you don't. Um, but I would say in the West, we did a very good job of avoiding that. I think maybe could take consideration. But, you know, our manager finished second. Woo! Woo! <laughs> what a name. That's awesome. It's great. Anyway. He's a pilot, too. A pilot? Yeah, he's going to pilot school. Wow. Well, that's good to see you. Okay. Well, let's wait till he grad has he graduated. He's going to school now? I'm not sure. Are you finished, Jung Woo? Maybe we can get a ride somewhere. I would love a ride. Maybe to Hawaii. I've never been. <laughs> I was uh, there all, a year and a week ago. Two weeks ago, a year and two wow. weeks ago. It was beautiful. I loved it. I swam with a turtle and a puffer fish. Was it a big turtle? It was a big turtle. Like and, and there's this turtle? There's a lot. If you touch a turtle, you have to pay Hawaii five thousand dollars. It's a big crime to mess with the turtles. That's more so than while, Hawaii five zero. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> so I was swimming with the turtle, and the turtle starts swimming towards me. Oh. And all I could think of, you stay back, because that's five thousand dollars. I don't have five thousand dollars. <laughs> but I loved that turtle. He was fun. But if the turtle touches you, I mean, it's not your fault, is it? I know, but. You you don't know what with, with Hawaii and their turtles. You you, you can't be too careful. All hey, right. happy Friday the thirteenth. Yes. Did you know I was born on Friday the thirteenth? I did not know that. I was born Friday the thirteenth, September thirteenth, nineteen. <laughs> Good copy. Nineteen. <laughs> You heard me. I said 19. 19. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I found, I found a little bit of trivia about Friday the 13th, which is harder than you would think. Yeah. It's harder than you would think because if you type the words Friday the 13th trivia into your browser, Jason. you get all sorts of stuff about Jason. Because yeah. that's my and, answer for every question. Yeah. Oh. I think that's not the answer. That those are not going to be the answers. As as Leah can tell you. Hello, Leah. Good to see you this morning. <laughs> so here are just a few. We don't have that many. I think it's five or six or something like that. Some questions, trivia questions about Friday the 13th. Being afraid of Friday the 13th is what? What is the word that we use for being afraid of Friday the 13th? Friday phobia. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to do that, yeah. That's, right. that's okay. Uh, so the fear of the number 13 is triskaidekaphobia. Triskaidekaphobia. It's fun to say. Trisca fear of Friday the 13th. Frigga triskaidekaphobia. You just add a frigga <laughs> to the beginning. So... Frigophobia would be. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. Frigophobia is fear of Friday. I get, yeah, frigophobia. Triscuit phobia is afraid of triscuits. If you don't like triscuits, if you, for example, prefer wheat thins, then yes, triscuit phobia. <laughs> triscuit phobia. Yeah. <laughs> and also feel of Sandy Duncan. Sandy Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> Was she did that Triscuit the commercial. Mom, the mom on Partridge Family? Uh, no. Oh. She was Sandy Duncan. First of all, she played Peter Pan. Until forever. So did some gymnast. Um, and then she was on a TV show called Sandy, in which she played a mom. And she did Triscuit commercials. She loved those Triscuits. <laughs> 
Thank you. Here's one for you. What is the maximum number of Friday the 13th that can occur in a calendar year? Three. Good guess. Uh, you were off by just a little. It's two. Yeah. Two. Apparently, mathematically, you can only squish so many Friday the 13th into 365 days. Yeah. So I was lucky. I was lucky. Uh, uh, there was a president of the United States who was famous for being very superstitious of Friday the 13th. He would never have 13 guests at a meal, and he would never travel on the 13th day of any month. There are three presidents with initials. JFK, LBJ, FDR. Which president was most afraid of the 13th? I'm going to go with Lyndon Baines Johnson. I would have too. I would have too, but apparently it's FDR. <laughs> Uh, that's why I, I guess D-Day was on the 12th. No, it was on the 6th yeah. of June and, and not the 13th. Didn't he say you only have, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself? And the number 13. I missed the part of that quote where he says... It's, it's usually left, left off. off. I don't know why, but... And the number 13. Yes. <laughs> there is a famous pop star. It's either Madonna... Taylor Swift, or Pink. And she considers 13 to be her lucky number. I'm going to go with Pink. Pink! Taylor Swift. No way! That's it's true. I it immediately. I said, no way. Well, I said no to that one, too, because Taylor Swift has been famous for, what, two days now? I don't know. It's a long time, Chris. Really? Yeah, she she became famous when she was like 12 years old or something. I should pay more attention to pop culture, I suppose. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you had, you know, teenage daughters. I mean, well, not pre-teens 10 years ago, you know, then you probably heard the okay. Yeah, I mean. Okay, yeah, I guess I knew about her 10 years ago, I guess, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'm not as swift as I thought I was. <laughs> Some Spanish speaking countries have fear of a different day of the week when it falls on the 13th. What day are Spanish speakers afraid of if it coincides with the 13th? You know what I I should I should have heard this at some point in all my time discussing superstitions with my students. Um but I have no idea. I'm going to go with uh, Saturday. You, you, had, you had six choices. Yeah. You had a 15% chance. <laughs> Tuesday. Oh. Tuesday the third, 13th. So. Nemo's telling us it's the march of time. Yes. My, uh, my inability to recognize Taylor Swift. Yes, it's definitely the march of time, Nemo. Thank you. <laughs> ah, all right. Here's one. This goes back. This goes back to our time, William. Our day. Our day in the sun. Friday, February thirteenth, nineteen seventy. A heavy metal band released an album. Was it Led Zeppelin? Alice Cooper. Or Black Sabbath? Well, considering my choice was going to be Black Sabbath before you read the choices, I'm going to stick with Black Sabbath. Wow. And isn't that, that's a technique we use on multiple choice, isn't it? When we teach students to do multiple choice, we say, answer the question in your head first and then see if your answer is listed. It's on the list. Go for it. Go with your gut. Mm -hmm. Very good. And it works because Black Sabbath is absolutely the answer. Now, if I were a good host... <laughs> If I were a good host, I would have found out what that album was. I think it was called Black Sabbath. Is that just that the, their title? Their I, title track? <laughs> I, I, 
one song by Black Sabbath, so. I don't know. Do I know any, Bla I sh probably, we do. We probably know them and we could sing them beginning to end and we just don't know it's Black Sabbath, probably. At least hum them or something. You know. Yeah. Do yeah. Them. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we got one more. Also from our day. There's a cast member from the TV show Seinfeld. This cast member was born, like me, on Friday the 13th. Which cast member was born on Friday the 13th? Um, I mean, you can give the character name as well if you'd like. Yeah, because I don't, I'm going to say uh, Cosmo Kramer. Mm. A very good guess, and I would have guessed that too. But no, it was, uh, it was Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Uh, who who went on to become a vice president? Oh, is is that the show? V yeah, I, I'll be honest. I've never seen I've it. Seen the yeah, I've never yes, seen the show. Didn't know what characters. She is the Veep. Okay. Yeah. So I guess she's a little uh, prescient because now we actually do have our very first female vice president. Yeah, that's the way it goes. You know, we got to put it in the movies first, unfortunately, sometimes. Right? How many black presidents were in the movies? How many times was Morgan Freeman president before yeah. before Obama, Obama was? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I've always wanted to do something with, with movie characters, with movie actors, and follow their career in the movie military. When they start off in a movie as a private, and they move up, they become a lieutenant, maybe they get to be captain. They get older, they get to be general. And then finally, they get to be president. It's the, the evolution of an, of an actor in politics. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I'm going to find out, I'm gonna find out which, which actor uh, was promoted from the lowliest to the highest. Good luck with that. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think... Is there anything else for us today, Mr. William? I think I'm, I'm all but done. Thanks for coming to play. Uh, we're going to be back next Friday. We're going to do it again. And maybe we'll start talking about our Thanksgiving plans. I don't know. I know my plans are curtailed, but I'm still probably going to cook something. Yeah, Sounds you got to cook your... I, yeah, I got to cook. Even if I don't eat it, I got to cook it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for playing today. Thank everybody. I want to thank thanks everybody who came to the show. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Please remember, my name is Chris. I love you all. Go away.